Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 5, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Fun and Games. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. The episode is rated TVPG, so will this video be? Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we meet Flint and see, you know, every, he gets along with everyone. Which, you know, of course makes it really devastating when he's, you know, in danger. And, yeah, some, some great stuff with Enoch preparing fits. You know, this thing of, I assure you, however terrible they are, it is nothing compared to how wretched you are. <laughs> and, and you know, oh, you know, I, I took great enjoyment in crafting. You know, you know just, yeah, that was, that was very, very fun. And the thing, you know, it just feels weird to me to be wearing this, you know, this thing with the, you know, and, and he, like, t touches it. And, Surely you jest. Those are obviously Kronian larvae. And, uh, and wipes some of it off on, on Enoch. Because Enoch was the one who put it there, you know, so it's only fair. And, yeah... Fitz goes over to where Gemma is, and, you know, he's like, okay, play it cool, and, you know, I never want to be apart from you ever again. I, you know, will you marry me? Okay, I said cool. I, I didn't mean this cool. And then he realizes, oh, she can't hear a word. And it is, kind of, you know, by the end of the episode, you know, he's like, I just want to put it out there. I did propose to you first, but you couldn't hear me? I, I did, I swear. You know, the, the two of them together continue to be really sweet. And, and, and Fitz does a really good job, you know, Kasaias catches, you know, Simmons and, yeah, Fitzsimmons, and, yeah, you know, Fitz, yeah, once Kasaias says she can only hear her master's voice, Fitz says, well, how do you expect her to tend to your guests if she can't hear their commands? You know, very nicely done. And, and yeah, you know, that is pretty compelling reason for him to, to turn the thing off. Let's see. Yeah, and, and I appreciate the... Um, Elena and Mac talking about, you know, how can they just stand here and gawk at it? You know, Mac says they've all been fed the same lie. And she says people choose what to believe. And she says something like this, these people sicken me or something, which I find I often lean towards that, though I do appreciate Mac's point of view. And... Yeah, it was legitimately quite clever. You know, the the mist. Do, you know, at first it seems to be doing nothing, but then Flint does get. You know, wait, right? Did, did I say we only met? I I believe we met Flint before this episode. I'm 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 struggling to keep track of all these characters. I gotta say, but yeah, I think I think he might have been in at least one of the earlier episodes, and I, but that, hmm, because I feel like I've seen, yeah, yeah, he was in episode three of this season as well, maybe that's also why, yeah, um, anyway, the, the, yeah, you know, then, then the, the, the crust, dude, sorry, you know, covers Flint, and then comes away, and then it looks like he just explodes, disappears into nothing, and it's real. You know, it was Elena. And, you know, yeah, when she said, I can't watch this, that was maybe why, you know, she wasn't literally saying, I don't have the strength of character to, to witness this, even though I, of course, care about these kids. She's saying, I can't just watch this. I can't stand by and watch and I'm not going to be able to do any good if I'm standing right here. So she just, you know, walks over there. Very clever. And, yeah. Cassius, given incel 
vibes very tense during the dinner when the you know, the other guys like I haven't seen you this happy since you got you know the forced to be here in this terrible piece of crap you must feel so embarrassed that he's like wow just holy crap you must really think you're incredibly safe to be saying that to someone who does have armed guards and who you are currently like you're on his turf like hypothetically if he tried something you know you'd be screwed in his defense he's never tried anything in his life and let's see yeah um Fitz does so well at at this character the marauder you know he talks about you know Oh, you you got to get them to kill each other and, and use fear. That's what I would do. And it's this thing of, like, for for a couple of seconds, no one really knows how to react. And then Cassie's just laughs. And it's this thing of, you know, when you are powerful enough, people will let you get away with almost anything. You know, I'm hoping that this is, you know, as I record this, you know, Trump is seemingly being forced to actually pay you know the the yeah this this wonderfully massive fine that suggests he'll have to sell stuff which like I I forget who but someone was like can you imagine yeah poor people can imagine having to sell something to to get by and and most of them have not done a fraction of the law breaking that Trump has moving on but but yeah you know Cassius laughs and it is this thing of you know he really wants the marauder on his side and he's maybe also kind of afraid you know you get the sense that the you know the marauder that you know Fitz is portraying here basically just <laughs> What's the word? Like, he'll kill you as soon as look at you, you know? You really don't want to mess mess around with him. No, no, no. And let's see. <laughs> I like the thing of, you know, there's another inhuman. Him? No, he's he's not inhuman. He's just cool. And, and Mac is like, it's just, yeah, that was, that was a great little moment. And... Let's see the um, yeah uh, very very th this episode had some incredible fights you know May versus Ben and and later Daisy versus Sonara you know great I'm not the biggest fan of when comic book media does you know this thing of oh you know we don't actually have reason to fight each other but. We've been captured by someone who's really, really strong, and they've forced us to fight against each other. I prefer when the fights are emotionally motivated, but they they did do a really solid job here. And and you know, very clever the thing you know for a little while Ben counters her every move because she thinks before doing, and then finally she she hits him, and there's like this moment where he's like, "What the heck." And she says, didn't think, just did, you know. Which, that that is the thing. Sometimes you go off, like, instinct. You know, you just do the... the yeah, there's, there's plenty of things. You know, again, mind reading doesn't exist in the real world. But hypothetically, you know, there are a number of cases where someone has reacted. They didn't really think. They didn't formulate a specific thing that they were going to do. Now the let's see, there we go. Um, that brings us to yeah. Uh, quite like when when Fitz and Cassius talk about you know fathers, and we have this thing. You know, Fitz says the things I did to impress my father left a scar, and you see Simmons hear that in the background. Very nice little moment uh, you know it it doubles as him opening up to her because they didn't really fully process that you know she's ready to forgive the the you know based on the the 
brief bit we saw at the at the uh, start of the episode right before this one where you know they're at the diner and she's trying to to console him you know she doesn't that's not the the that's not how you act if you're not at all ready to forgive a person he wasn't ready to forgive himself and here he's basically saying you know i'm i'm ready to to start dealing with it and and we have the right um so so yeah the very nicely done when when you know um, let's see may is you know trying to convince ben and and there's this line about you know who you have to make sure knows the plan or something you have to reach the right person and you know yeah the 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 idea is put in fitz's head by ben because may via her thoughts told ben put it in his head because she recognizes him obviously and you know ben has never seen fitz before and and yeah you know fitz picks up on it immediately and says you know this fight bores me and then he's like really really like he is that uh let's see i think was it yeah, the, the you know this thing of it's it's something like I don't want to see this ancient has been or something, and and yeah you know she's like laying on a bit thick, aren't you? you know, he is he is going to face so many like judgmental stares from her in response to this. And and yeah, you know, you have this the the thing of she's going to be put on the on the surface instead, which yeah, that buys them some time. That you know, that's a that's a place she can be rescued from. It's much harder when she's right in front of all these powerful people. And let's see. Yeah, the the at first, you know, my heart was pounding so hard. I thought I was. I thought somebody slipped cocaine in my drink. Okay, Escobar. That was that was quite good. I like that. And 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 this thing of you know my what was it? My brother spent hours talking me out of an exorcism. And, and I like this thing of, you know, at first she just, she thought and thus did it, you know. The, um, what's the word? Um, you know, it came very naturally to her. It's, it's just what felt, yeah. Which again, if we're going off this LGBTQ+, you know, allegory with the Inhumans in the MCU, yeah, you know, for, you know, if when when you actually listen to them, and you should, you'll hear them say, you know, just it just felt right, you know. And again, as long as no one's getting hurt. And the LGBTQ plus community don't hurt people more than, they don't even hurt as much as, you know, the, if you look at, like, stats, it's actually us cishet are, you know, there's a much larger percentage of, of our population that are, you know, intentionally hurting people other than self-defense. Now, and, and, yeah, Grill heard every word, like, oh, just, yeah, very nicely done, and, and, yeah, he uses the, the remote to, to, um, set the, you know, uh, the magnetic thing to, to have them all up against the wall. And Cassius reveals he knows now that Ben lied because, you know, that again, that's the thing with lying. If, you know, if you make a declarative statement and later evidence arises to the contrary, you know, because he didn't say, I don't know, I can't quite tell. He said, no, for sure. 
And and yeah, now another person showed up who traveled through time. So yeah. And let's see. Yeah, and, and yeah, Sinara kills Ben. Very just devastating. I I, I really admire the show's ability to keep doing this because I I honestly thought, oh, Ben's gonna like, you know, help at least a little bit more. I, I did not expect him to, to die this soon. And at the same time, it doesn't feel like the character was just wasted. He did really significant stuff. And, yeah, I mean, was he in was this maybe two episodes or something? It's, it's really not very, very much. And, yeah, I love the moment. I, again, like, I honestly wasn't sure where he was going to come down when, when the, you know, there's that line about, you know, they they don't use the word prophecy, but you know, yeah, I think Colson says something like, "We travel through time to save the world," and Grill says, "You speak of the prophecy," and you know, for a second there, we're thinking, I mean, he might be a believer. I mean, believer. His his teeth are fine. So so yeah, um, but no, he he just he laughs at it. And 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 it is you know it does work as a as a good setup. It's a good sarcastic joke. You know, <gasps> you mean the thing I don't believe in. And I, I like the thing of you're gonna have to get in line. And this, I I have a knife. We we need something better. There was only so much cutlery I could choose. Poor Simmons, just so so precious. Just she's she's not she's not saying you made a bad choice of the cutlery. She's saying, you know, this. Uh, yeah, you need more. And I really appreciate. By the end of the episode, she did use the knife. You know, we the the, the yeah unexpected, but the you know it was better than nothing. And. Or wait, was that the same knife? I guess it's possible they got her a better knife in between. Anyway, um, but but yeah, you know, again, it it plants it in our mind. You know, we're thinking Simmons knife plan. So when we later do see her use a knife, you know, it doesn't come out of nowhere. And let's see. Yeah, um, Fitzsimmons almost reunited, and then, you know, first an, another servant walks right in front of, of Simmons, and then, you know, they walk off, and then Enoch shows up right by Fitz, you know, just, yeah, that's quite fun. And again, I really appreciate it. They didn't take forever to reunite the Starcross lovers again. I don't mind, you know, honestly, I love the two of them together. Um, it bugs me when a show just spends forever keeping two characters apart that are obviously, you know, supposed to end up together. You know, just bring them together and then have relationship drama. Don't keep them apart for forever. And, yeah, we see that... The kid, Flint, is using, you know, he can he can control rock, and you know, at first he's just like throwing, you know, almost pellets, and and you know, the the yeah, eventually builds a massive boulder, and Grill, you know, yeah, sure, point your gun at him, see what good that's gonna do. And yeah, um, some th there's a lot of really great stuff with Fallneck. Samuel Rokin plays the character; just fantastic performance. The the um, yeah um, the ag again like these actors you know met for this they they. They had some stuff on the page to work with. 
but you feel like, okay, these two grew up together, they can't stand each other, you know, there's a lot of little comments. You know, Falnak immediately is like, I can't believe I'm actually in this dump. There's nothing of value here. I'm only here because Father sent me here. You know, I did not come out of my own free will. And, you know, not long after, Cassie says, you you prejudge things. That's always been your weakness. You know, these these things just... And, and the, you know, Falnak refers to Sonara as your stray. And just, yeah. And, yeah. Um, awesome fight between Sonara and, and Daisy. And it is this thing of, yeah, you know, once you take... Like if if Sonara gets a really good chance with the with the two balls, yeah, you know that's gonna end. Uh, you know, most most people we've seen her go up against had nothing they could do about it. But Quake powers can you know knock them away, and and yeah, you know both of them have a good amount of training. You know, Sonara is stronger. Kree are stronger than humans, even in humans. And the the I can imagine. I think Sonara maybe re, uh, um, relies too much on on the balls. So Daisy has the advantage of you know she she fights like a lot. You know, she can hypothetically if she wanted to, she could a lot of the time just rely entirely on her powers but she fights a lot so yeah and I thought they did a, a really great job throughout and also appreciate the the variety their fight is just powers and and you know their bare hands gloved hands but you know Ben versus you know Ben had these two like dagger blade things to, to and May had a, a staff you know so there's some variety there and yeah before the the plan can be carried out of course Cassius turns on the force field and very very cool escape you know got the got the knife got some some icer fire and you know he shoots he he don't, jumps through the air shoots the the thing to turn the the force field back on and let's see yeah at the very very end we get so so yeah in this episode the the our characters definitely did make some progress several of them managed to to get free um but yeah and and at the very end you know Enoch I am a Cree as I have always been okay a plus on the conviction and the confidence. Word choice, mm, gonna have to give you a C minus on that one because that is not how people talk about. Yeah, that's. But yeah, and you get the thing. You know, people don't come back from that. I am not a person. So yeah, they do have a plan for or an idea at the very least for getting. Melinda back from the surface. Very cool. And let's see. Huh. Uh, okay, so I'm Deepy Trivia. In the opening scene, Flint pulls a Rizzoli and Isles DVD. Yeah, season four DVD out of his backpack before putting it back in and exchanging it for broken scissors. Wow. And this episode is directed by series star Clark Gregg. Very cool. He did a great job. And let's see. Yeah. Um, I got to admit, I, I got this wrong as well. Somebody entered for the, the Goofs page, and this has now been corrected to incorrectly regarded as Goofs. Every time in the past when a human is exposed to Terrigen Mist, it is fatal. Agent Trip or near fatal, Agent Coulson, saved only by a chain in his hand. Yet here three human children are exposed and survive. It's not the Terrigen Mist that is harmful. It was the metal from the Diviner that was harmful. 
Jia Ying was afraid that since there were four, only four divine nerves remaining on Earth, that if they were ever lost or destroyed, the inhuman race would go extinct. So she had asked the inhuman scientists to duplicate the Terrigen crystals. They were successful and they were unable to make them without the diviner metal mixed in with it, making the new crystals deadly to all who were not inhuman. The Kree, however, have the original crystals with no diviner metal mixed within, so that's why the remaining three children who were exposed survived. I believe I said in a video on this, on an episode of the season, that, oh, wow, they just, you know, the you know, the ones who don't turn into inhumans just die, and, you know, thinking about it now, wow, obviously that's not right, they, they're not gonna be killing that many of their slaves, no, if you don't turn into, if you, yeah, if you aren't revealed as an inhuman, you just get by and you're still a, a regular slave rather than a luxury slave. Let's see... I like the detail that Daisy likes the whole bounty hunter look that fits his rock and and she says and, and Simmons says, I still prefer him in cardigan. Very sweet. And let's see. And I do appreciate that the <laughs> Fitz and Simmons are both so you know, so much on the same page about this is the time for marriage for them that you know when she doesn't know that he said it she says it you know let's see and right I also really appreciate you know Elena talks about you know oh you know it, it was three weeks between when you know the the transition let's go with and when she actually felt, you know, yeah, it, it was not an immediate thing. That's also a thing that some, you know, yeah. Um, well, the, the um, LGBTQ plus people don't all immediately feel super happy about it. That doesn't mean that it's not coming. That doesn't mean that it's wrong for them. You know, a lot of the time, it's social pressure. And let's see. I think that is... Yeah. Um... Um, um, hmm. Right, yes, here we go. Um, yeah, I, I quite like, you know, yeah, Fitz Fitzsimmons used to talk about, oh, it's like the universe is keeping us apart. And, you know, now Fitz says, you know, the the yeah he describes all the stuff he had to go through you know i realized something the universe can't stop us because we have crossed galaxies we traveled through time we survived the bottom of the atlantic just so we could be together